Welcome back to the Home Lab and today I've got another interesting video for you. What we're going to look at is some microwave waveguide and I'm going to try and explain how it works. So I was doing a little bit of late night browsing on eBay as I want to do and I spend far too much money on odd bits and pieces and I came across uh, some scrap microwave waveguide and uh, I don't have a radar set at home so it seemed like a bit of a silly purchase at the time but it was going quite cheaply so I thought do you know what I've got a plan for this and uh, also I can use the time to show you how microwave waveguide works. So, as I'm sure you know, microwave radiation is like radio, it's an electromagnetic wave, but hence in the name, it has a much shorter wavelength, uh, typically a few centimetres or even a few millimetres. Now, if you want to get microwaves from transmitter to antenna, or in reverse, um, receive them, so get them from the antenna to the receiver, you could use a cable. Now, uh, the type of cable you could use would probably be a coaxial cable, and you might have seen coaxial cable. It's the sort of cable that's used to connect the antenna uh, to your television or your satellite receiver, and it has a central pin and an outer sort of conductive sheath on it. The problem with coaxial cables is they're fine at low frequencies, but microwave radiation is around one gigahertz. That's 1,000 million vibrations a second or higher. And if you use coaxial cable, it has huge losses on it, so you can only use very short lengths. So the solution is a really strange one. Rather than using a cable, what you use is a hollow pipe, and that is microwave waveguide. Now, there's another really weird effect that I want to discuss with you, and that's something called the skin effect. So, if you take a large cable like this, a fat piece of brass, and you pass DC down it, the current travels through the whole cross-sectional area of the cable. But when you go to AC frequencies, even quite low, so 50 or 60 hertz like mains frequency, you find that the current only uses the outer section of the cable to a depth of about 9 millimetres, and that's called the skin depth. Now, what happens when you increase the frequency is that skin depth becomes less and less and less, which means less of the cable is used, and you can carry lower and lower currents because you haven't got as much material carrying the current. Now, at microwave frequencies, so if you've got AC oscillating in a cable thousands and millions of times a second, the skin depth, that's the depth of the cable that actually carries the current, is about two micrometers, 2,000 millionths of a meter. So only a tiny proportion of the cable will actually be carrying the microwave uh, signal that's going up and down it. So um, it's really not any good using a cable to carry high frequency AC signals. So what we're going to do instead, of course, is use a microwave waveguide. So the solution to this problem is somewhat counterintuitive. What we use instead is not a cable, but actually a hollow pipe to send the microwave radiation down. Now, um, the guys who used to bolt this stuff together, um, typically for radar sets, so they're working well into the gigahertz region, uh, were pejoratively known as plumbers. Um, it's actually a very, very skilled job indeed. Uh, but they were called plumbers because they were basically bolting together different pipe sections. And there's a whole range of them. There are sort of uh, end caps, there's one here. Uh, there are joining flanges, there are right angles and splitters, etc. And of course, rotating joints. Um, so you could feed the microwave into a horn that was rotating um, for your radar set. Now, um, mine's never gonna work, even though it does demonstrate uh, some of these different pieces of uh, waveguide. But what I thought I'd do instead is bolt it all to a piece of silvered perspex and make, well, either the world's greatest shaving mirror or perhaps you might think something that is completely useless. 
So as I'm sure you know, light is an electromagnetic wave and it can pass down optic fibre. So there's a similarity there between the way that light moves down optic fibres and microwaves can move through these hollow waveguide pipes. But it's sort of there that the similarity uh, ends because optic fibre is a dielectric material. It doesn't carry electricity. Whereas when we carry uh, microwave radiation through waveguides, we use a material that's typically aluminium, silver and gold sometimes. And this is a material that conducts electricity. So the way the wave travels down it is slightly different. Now, the other thing that you'll notice is the aperture has a width to it. And as the microwave frequency goes up, its wavelength goes down, we make this port or this hollow opening smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, waveguides have a cutoff frequency. They have a lowest frequency that they can carry. And uh, the cutoff frequency controls uh, the width that you can have the pipe. Now, I couldn't actually find out what type of um, waveguide this actually is. Uh, but when I looked it up, it was pretty close to one that had a cutoff frequency of about 12 gigahertz and could work well up to about 19 gigahertz. So let's now explain how an electromagnetic wave can travel down a hollow waveguide pipe. So you'll have to forgive a bit of hand waving here, but I'd rather do that than draw lots and lots of pictures. So if you're sending a radio frequency signal down a coaxial cable, you've got the central core and the outer sheath, and the central core connected to the transmitter is gonna be going plus minus, plus minus, plus minus. Now, if you think about that, if you ground the outer sheath, and that's still made of metal, then it will be plus in the center for a short period of time and zero, or you can consider it to be negative on the outer sheath. So there'll be an electric field pointing that way. As soon as the inner conductor becomes negative, it'll be negative with respect to the outer sheath and the electric field will be that way. So what we've got is an oscillating electric field, like spokes uh, on a bicycle wheel, oscillating up and down between plus minus, plus minus, plus minus, plus minus. Now, if that's happening very rapidly, it'll have an associated magnetic field with it at 90 degrees. And if you've got a magnetic field and an electric field oscillating together, they will travel at 90 degrees to each other. They'll travel along the cable at approximately the speed of light. So we're going to use a similar idea in explaining how a hollow microwave waveguide can also carry very high frequency signals. So the way to explain how microwave waveguide can carry a high frequency wave is to think of it a little bit like coaxial cable. Imagine that the bottom of the tube is the inner core of the coaxial cable and the top of the tube is the outer sheath. Now, if we inject our high frequency uh, wave into the waveguide from an antenna that sits in front of it and it's inside um, another metal container, what happens is we set up an electric field between the bottom and the top of the waveguide. And uh, the bottom will be positive, then negative, then positive, then negative. So you can imagine the electric field again going up, then down, then up, then down very, very rapidly. That again will have an associated magnetic field. And those two oscillating together at 90 degrees will travel in the third 90 degrees direction, approximately at the speed of light, straight down the waveguide. Now, there are other ways that waveguide works and it's really quite complicated, but imagine it as almost two parallel plates traveling in a long direction and positive and negative pulses traveling down those positive plates. And that's one mode in which uh, waveguide works and it's called the TEM mode, the transverse electric mode. And it's a good place to start in explaining how microwave radiation can travel down the pipe. So there's so much more that can be said about how a microwave waveguide works and all the different modes in which it operates. Um, you might want to look up transverse magnetic modes if you've got a feel for the transverse electric mode. Uh, but most of that is way beyond the scope of these kind of videos.
Now, um, I don't know if the uh, eagle-eyed of you have been looking at this, uh, but uh, apart from the fact it wouldn't work anyway, there is one really glaringly obvious mistake that I've made when putting this together. I did it on purpose because I had to get it to fit on the Perspex sheet. And perhaps if you've spotted that, um, something you could never do with connecting uh, microwave waveguide, uh, you could mention that in the comments. Anyway, I hope you feel you now know a little bit more about what microwave waveguide is. And you might actually see it in the real world when you uh, drive past big radar sets and things like that at airports. Um, you've got a feel for um, how it works and um, a little bit more about the sort of theory about what's going on inside and why we don't use a wire. Anyway, I'll be making another video soon and do join me then and I look forward to seeing you then.